Let's compare Kendall's tau to Spearman's r in this example. In this case, a master artist ranks 12 paintings from 1 to 12, and the student artist ranks the same paintings in column 2. So these are the rankings given to the 12 paintings according to the master, and these are the rankings given according to the student. Let's compute Kendall's tau for this for this example. Well, the ranking over here is 2, and we need to count how many uh, observations there are below this row that have a higher rank. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we find 10. For the discordant, we want to look and see how many observations there are below this 2 in this table with the lower rank. And there's only 1. So we can fill out the rest of these very quickly. If you want to practice on your own, you definitely should. And the Ds. Okay. And in this case, we have a C equal to 60 and a D equals to 6. Now let's compute the Spearman's rank. The, here the, dif the D means differences. Here it means discordant pairs. So the difference here is minus 1, 1, minus 1, uh, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1. And the d squares are just 1's all the way across. So the sum of the d squares equals 12. Now let's compute the two statistics. The tau, remember, is c minus d over c plus d. So 60 minus 6 over 66, and that is a tau of about 0.8. And here's Spearman's rank, 1 minus 6 d squared, sum of d squared over n, uh, this is the same as n cubed over n, right? So we find that the Spearman's rank is 95. In both cases we see that the statistics are picking up a very strong positive level of correlation. In most cases, we'll find that Spearman's R predicts slightly higher levels of correlation than Tau will on the same data sets. This is okay so far. We're seeing that both are performing well in this case. And specifically here, we see that, you know, there's no large differences in, in, in ranks associated with what the master, how the master and the student rank the paintings. But now let's look at another example. Here the rankings are pretty much the same for all paintings, except what the master considered to be the best painting, the student considered to be the worst, and vice versa, what the student considered to be the best, the master considered to be the worst. Let's now fill out the concordance and discordance in this case. I'm going to do it quickly, but I do encourage you to do it by yourself. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and this is by definition zero. And here we don't have any below 12, and then we've got um, all of these only have one, this observation, ranked below any of these in the table. So here we all have ones. Okay. And for the Spearman's, we're looking at the differences in rank. So here we have minus 11. All of these are 0, except this is 11. So we have 121 and 121, and all of these are zeros. So here the sum is 242. Here the sum is 10. And here the sum is 45. We can now compute Kendall's tau and Spearman's r
for this new data set. Recall that Kendall's tau is C minus D divided by C plus D. So we have 45 for concordant pairs and 10 for discordant, resulting in a tau of about 64%. The Spearman's rank coefficient uses the sum of the DI squares, which is this 242, to find a coefficient equal to 15%. So while before the two correlation statistics for the case number one, they were both giving very strong positive uh, very strong levels of, of positive correlation. Now we see that because of the mismatch in ranks between the first painting and the twelfth painting, Spearman's correlation statistic is dropping all the way down close to zero. Kendall's is dropping as well, but it's not near the drop not isn't nearly as high. So in this case, we see that Spearman's is far more sensitive to, these, to this outlying anomaly where the ranks were reversed for, for paintings 1 and 12. So on the one hand, that might be considered a bad thing because a small anomaly in a ranking might really throw off the strength of the Spearman's rank coefficient, whereas it only minorly affects the Kendall's tau. On the other hand, if we want to use a procedure that's able to pick up any of these really gross differences in ranks, then perhaps it, you know, we can think about it and we should use Spearman's rank coefficient in order to find out whether or not there's any big differences in ranks. So in the end, best practice would actually be to compute both the tau and the Spearman's rank and use the combination to see if there's any uh, anomalies in the ranking scheme 